This recording is labeled explicit. Mature audiences only. Parental discretion is advised. Oro kana mono wa eichiyo yorokobanai. Tara jibu no ikendakeo arawasu. A fool finds no pleasure in understanding, but delights in airing his own opinions. Proverbs 18.2 May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, and please add some light coming from the darkness that is the Danger Zone show. God bless Dr. Mo. Bitch alert. Bitch alert, bitch alert. Attention all you bitches. Listen up. Dr. Mo is on the air. This is the rude guy checking in from Maui. And this is the show with something to offend everybody. Okay, hey, this is Becky Churro, the Becky Churro Show, and you are listening to Dr. Mo in the Danger Zone. Go get him, Doc. Hello, bitches. This is Dr. Mo. Welcome to the Danger Zone. We don't get fooled again. When you were after the sh- after the ball, uh, you went home and you were in the car with Catherine's daughter and Theo. Yes. And then what? Because happened? what ended up happening was, um, you know, I was really distraught. I was like crying so much. And then, you know, they made me go back because they're like, you know, you have to do the final interview. And, you know, and they made it really nice for me. So, anyway, I don't know. Um, Jasmine ended up convincing these producers to do something for me. They're like, you know, you can't do this to her. This is not right. You know, you've got to, like, try to do something for her, you know. And uh, she's like, you know, why don't you let her go out with Theo? Let Theo take her out or something. So, you know, she ended up convincing them, and they ended up giving Theo some money, and then Theo agreed to take me out somewhere. And at the end of the day, wow. it was bittersweet. You know, that's I like thought, a, I, I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Like, they're yeah. forcing guys to go out with me now? <laughs> yeah, they, they're paying them all off. They're paying them off. <laughs> it's, a, it's like a charity date. I, that's, yeah. I, this, and they, nobody called me. I want you to know. <laughs> I would have been there for free. I know. <laughs> Yeah, it was just, I felt really awful about that because I was just like, oh, my God, you know, I don't need anybody's pity. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need anybody to pity me right now. Like, it's not making me feel any better. But I, I, I finally did agree to it, and so that's how I ended up in the car with Theo and Catherine's daughter, which we were going to drop off to her. And then we ended up seeing her on the way, on the road, and we just kind of, like, pulled over, and she got in the car with them. So. Wow. And then, so, you, the so you went that. out. You went out with Theo. Uh-huh. And then, and then, what'd you guys do? Anything interesting? Well, we went to, we were in like this, uh, you know, English countryside village. So, you know, there was really Ooh, nothing around to do. It's, it's very so, romantic. I, oh, I think it's it. absolutely <laughs> romantic. What a wonderful <laughs> opportunity to spend time together. <laughs> Hello. It's Go so ahead. Much. American Princess Clarissa Santiago, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so anyway, we go out and we find like this little restaurant and, you know, we go in there and we just live it up in there. We order the most expensive champagne, the most expensive wine, the most expensive steak dinners. I mean, you name it, we ordered it because we had like 150 pounds and that was like a whole bunch of money in this restaurant. So like we ended up getting like a feast worth of food. And, you know, and that was that. And then, you know, we just headed back because we were on schedule, too. They weren't trying to let us out because, you know, too late together. So right. we had to go back. And um, and they ended up picking us up on the road. So we didn't even get to, like, really walk or anything. <laughs> oh, man. They called the producers right away, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, the producers said that it was okay, but they only wanted us out for, like, an hour or two. And I think I got away with three hours in the restaurant with him without them calling us and then we got a call eventually wow they're like you've been gone for three hours where the hell are you <laughs> where are you yeah so, so did you uh, that, you know? did you want to do anything on the trip were you feeling were you kind of you know throbbing down there and were ready to do something um hell yeah you know like i just thought it was 
I, you know, I thought I was going to get the most of my experience. You know, that's how I was looking at it. I'm like, you know, whenever am I going to be in London again, you know? But there just was an opportunity for that. So it was just a really, you know, a real fantasy. That's all it was. So you wait, know? And they, uh, they, brought, they brought you to the restaurant. Did they drive you there or did you go yourself? No, they drove us. Um, they drove us to the corner and then we got out and walked maybe about three storefronts down. And that was the restaurant. And we walked in, and they they got us a table. Once we ordered the bottle of wine, you know, I guess they thought, oh, these guys are going to spend money. So they gave us, like, this nice booth table. And, you know, and we just, like, ate, and we talked. And we talked about so much. Like, I got to know so much about him, and he got to know a lot more about me, you know. And he was like, you know, I wanted to hang out with you and just kind of see you in a relaxed, you know, having a good time, you know, kind of feeling and mood because I was always yeah because on camera I was always so uptight and I'm like you know I have to be perfect I have to be perfect (laughs) you know that's that pageant uh, mindset why why did you why did you um how did you get started in the pageant world Ooh, um well when I was in high school it really all started for me with the whole pageant thing my um best friend in high school we won the cheerleading team together and her mother put her in like this teen Puerto Rico pageant oh man you know, New, you York, were, New York Puerto Rico pageant you were a cheerleader Mm-hmm. Oh, I was a cheerleader. Man. Another... <laughs> I was captain of the dance team. I was wow. in the drama that's club. Like, uh, that's, that's like a whole other movie for my imagination. I got Now uh, I, now I have a high school phase. I'm going to have to send you a picture. Yeah, I'm going to have to send you a picture of my cheerleader days. Send away. Just for you, just because it's giving you so many happy thoughts. Send away. Happy thoughts are abound. <laughs> now, so yeah, you're at the you're so you're at the restaurant with Theo, and and you're mm-hmm. talking, and you're like, you know, you're feeling more relaxed. Uh, obviously, they were maybe Paul was saying that you were acting because he saw you being tense and not yourself. Yeah, perhaps you know what I mean. Like it could, you know, who knows what they saw, like. You know, at the end of the day, I don't think I was any different off camera, you know, than I was on than I was on camera. You know, obviously, when we were around the judges, we wanted to be on our best behavior. We wanted to stand the way they wanted us to stand and walk the way they wanted us to walk and use the words that they use. You know, like instead of saying pants, they wanted us to use the word trousers. You know, so it was like we had to be on our P's and Q's. And doesn't a princess in the public eye, I mean, can the princess just be like that person that she is behind closed doors in the public eye? Like Cassie? No, not exactly. <laughs> like Cassie, yeah, I thought I thought Cassie was there, but uh, you're absolutely right. You make a very good point. If you're going to be a princess and you got to start acting like it in the show itself throughout, so you can demonstrate that you can do this on on the regular with people peep, peep, peeping into every side of your life. Exactly. Uh, I would imagine. So. Yeah. I mean, that's how I was looking at it. I'm like, you know, I have to be on my best behavior at all times. Why? Because there's people with cameras around. You know, there's people, um, you know, talking to you, the public. They don't want us talking to the public, just like with celebrities. They don't want celebrities talking too much to the public because you don't know who you're talking to. And any little bit of information that you let go, that's it. You know, that's in the tabloids the next day. So, like, I'm thinking on those terms, you know, of being a princess. You know, I'm thinking that... <laughs> grand of it you know so I'm like you know I have to be on my best behavior and I have to be an example you know what I do in my house that's my business and you know that's a whole nother story you know and if you want me to be how I am in my house chances are you probably wouldn't make me the princess <laughs> well you know I, you got you gotta you gotta why would you want to be an American princess I wanted fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> it was a fifty thousand dollar prize, and you know, at the end of the day, it wasn't a real, it wasn't a real thing about the title, you know, because I knew there was no such thing as the American princess. It wasn't like I was going to be coming back and having dinner with the president, you know. But I knew. You never that, know. The president could well, be black. You, know, you never know. Yeah, I mean, considering a, a person like me, I definitely would have tried to make the most of of that whole thing. But it's not a real title. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, there what really was is, the title? What was the title they were going to give you in England? Oh, the real the British title is real. Um, that's uh, we would be the lady, the lady of the manor. 
What manor? What was that house? It looked like a big barn. What was it? I don't even know. I don't think we... Did we ever see the house? I don't even know. But um, it was the manor of... Um, I don't know. I don't remember. It was last year. <laughs> it was... You now, that name was weird, though, because I was looking at it, and I'm like, that name ain't right. That sounds like an insult. You know, they just saw, like, some name on the list, I think, and said, you know, this one. We're going to pick this one and give it to one of the girls. So <laughs> you were, know, were you like, going to hook up with the Polish guy? Tell me about the Polish guy, the prince. Right. The prince, you know, I thought the prince was a really nice guy. And, you know, we all had a funny feeling about him. I don't think that either one of us thought that he was the prince. But, you know, we all had a funny feeling about him. Like, who is this guy? He's so strange. What is he, what is he doing around here? Like, he just, he was supposed to be an old friend of the family's. And perhaps he was. But he just seemed like a new figure, you know. And um, He was. You know, and I, I didn't think he was the prince. I mean, and he did you know, he seemed kind of gay to me. You know, like, not to be, I have lots of gay friends. <laughs> I love the gay community, you know. Yeah, be careful. I got a, <laughs> you, you better be but, careful you know, there. I got a lot yeah. of, uh, I got a lot of fags and dykes listening. So. Well, you know, well, I love the gay community and they should know that. But I, you know, because I have so many gay friends, I mean, I, he struck me as being kind of gay, you know. And he was talking about his dog a whole lot, you know. And, you know, I don't think that guys really go on and on about their dogs. You know, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But we thought that he was kind of funny. No, we don't. Right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was looking at him and uh, it, it seemed, yeah, the whole thing when he was an old friend of the family, I was wondering, why would you need a third male unless he's got, he is part of, the decision-making process and possibly one of the most important voices. And then I started figuring out, you know, he is probably the advisor to the prince because he's kind of faggish. Why would he want a princess? So he's probably the guy who comes in, you know, who goes in a foxhole mm -hmm. there and goes point for the prince and mm -hmm. checks out the whole situation. And then when a prince walks in, he gives his vote. Yeah, I mean, you know, who knows? I really don't know how that happened. I mean, they said that the prince saw us uh, transform throughout. Um, you know, I don't really know how they made that happen. I don't remember ever seeing Michael anywhere around Makush or whatever his name was. Yeah. You know, I don't remember, you know, ever seeing him around or meeting him before. So, you know, uh, other than that one night, you know, which... You know, I hope they were telling the truth, you know, and I hope that his decision was based on, you know, our involvement throughout the show and not really based on, you know, one night of hanging out with us and getting us drunk, <laughs> you right, know, right, Cause right. That's, not, that's just not right, you know, especially when they didn't let us drink throughout the whole time. Don't you think we're going to get drunk? We haven't drunk in five weeks. You know, every time we drink, we get a sip of champagne or something silly like that. We weren't allowed to drink. So that night when we had that big dinner and they were letting us have drinks, of course the girls are going to get drunk. <laughs> you know, of course. But you did good, though. You did good. I was watching um, I was watching uh, our girl's name. Um, what's her name again? Which one? Uh, the, the number two. The number two, Jasmine? Yeah, Kathy? so Jasmine. I was watching Jasmine grabbing her fork and pointing at the guy's face while telling the story. <laughs> And I'm like, no, she didn't do that shit. And that, and and I'm like, when she's in the, when she's going to the ball, I'm like, that's a princess. Who does that? And I was watching you very closely. And, yeah. Uh, and I. You but know, I do have a habit of talking with my fortune knife up in the air, you know. That's fine. But I mean, you were, you maybe were being it's a Latino thing, but we're very animated. <laughs> you got, you got that, you got that, uh, that pageant uh, training, I think. Well, you did, you it did very good. You were talking. You were laughing. Uh, I who were you sitting next to? But I didn't think at one point it seemed to me you might have been bored, but you were kind of still, you know, mm -hmm. engaging. I probably and... was lost in thought. I mean, I have a habit of getting days out like that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it's they caught the, it on uh, camera. <laughs> is it the hypnotic girl? You like to drink, don't you? <laughs> the Doug Passion. <laughs> yeah, Doug Passion. I heard I heard you like to drink. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Now, when when uh, so. The, the ball after the ball mm -hmm. did you you know when they when they sent the two girls to the ball what did you do i mean did you did they take you back to the mansion pack you up and send you home right away 
No, I mean, I was really upset. I was crying first and foremost. I mean, I was just like really hysterical. They tried to interview me right after that elimination. Like they ran up in my face and put all the microphones in my face. I mean, it was just like traumatic. <laughs> I was just like, oh my God, get this out of my face. Like right. I just stood there. I didn't want to talk and I just started crying and I just walked away and they started.